Welcome to Rock Center Shorts. My name is Mike Callahan. I'm the executive director of the Rock Center for Corporate Governance and a professor of the practice here at Stanford Law School. And we're delighted to be joined by our guest today. Kristen Severchek is formerly the general counsel and corporate secretary at Lyft, but as of yesterday, president of business affairs at Lyft. And uh, she joined there in November, 2012 and was previously with the Gunderson Detmer Law Firm. Congratulations on your new role and thanks so much for taking the time to be with us today at the Rock Center. Thank you for asking me to participate. So the topic we want to talk about is social and political advocacy by corporations. And Lyft announced a response pretty quickly to Texas Senate Bill 8, the anti-abortion uh, law that went into, into place there. And you were moving quickly and ahead of all other companies. Could you tell us a little bit about what Lyft announced and why you moved so fast in that regard? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and and again, thank you for having me on to talk about this topic. It's one that is um, that is very important to me. Um, and so, as far as the what, what did we do? Uh, we did a couple things. First, we created a driver legal defense fund where we agreed to cover 100% of legal fees and costs for drivers who were sued under SB8 while driving on the Lyft platform. We also donated a million dollars to Planned Parenthood so that we could help ensure that transportation is never a barrier to healthcare access. Um, and sorry, now I've forgotten your second question. Oh, you, how did we, you, how did we act so quickly? Well, you, yeah, you came out so quickly and, and I think uh, it was a powerful statement and I'm curious about you know, kind of the process that led to that. Yeah, absolutely. And, and for this, I have to really credit our CEO, Lee, Logan Green. Um, the day that the Supreme Court failed to act um, on its shadow docket on, uh, on, on that matter, he reached out to a small group of us at the company and said, this seems terrible. What can we do? This, this is scary for all of our constituents, our drivers, our writers, and so on. Mm -hmm. And so we tossed around a couple different ideas. One of them was, could we fund uh, drivers actually to take folks who needed abortions out of state to be able to receive the health care that they needed. And ultimately, we didn't go forward with that because just for practical matters, Texas is such a big state that could be a 14 hour drive. And so we looked at where could we really make a meaningful difference. And uh, this is why we did what we did. Um, SB8, as you know, is such a broadly written law that anyone who quote aids or abets in an abortion actually can be found civilly liable under that law. And so this absolutely could in include a driver. Obviously, it could also include a therapist or somebody like that who had spoken to a, a woman who was going to get an abortion. Um, so we were really worried about the breadth of that law. And we also did the $1 million donation to Planned Parenthood because we wanted to ensure that that organization was set up to be able to, in other states, provide healthcare access for those who needed it. Got it. And, um, so, and so I guess I will just add after Logan sent that initial um, meeting uh, or initial email, we made the decision in I think a, a roughly a 24 hour period. So it was, it was a very all hands on deck type situation. And that moving first was, was powerful. And so I'm curious about I mean, every company Lyft included depends upon a community of stakeholders and drivers, employees, customers. What sort of reaction did you get internally and externally uh, after the announcement? It was very overwhelmingly positive, and I was so gratified to see that. And, and this was something obviously we had talked tremendously about. Uh, you know, we're a company that it's that is across the United States. We know that we serve a very disparate group of individuals, and so and and we know that this can be a polarizing topic. Um, but what we actually found was that folks were by and large very gratified, very excited, and very grateful that we decided to take a position here, especially because they did not see other companies um, speaking out. You know, there were, of course, some quite nasty notes that I got from a few people, but uh, the over overwhelming majority was was hugely positive. And so that that issue of the controversy that you saw, and it doesn't sound like you saw very much, is, is one I'd like to explore a little bit, because as you know, taking positions on controversial social and political issues is something that boards really struggle with. It's a tough area of corporate governance. 
some boards and leadership teams take the only if it affects our business type of approach direct on. Yeah. Uh, others obviously do more. Uh, and then so as your leadership team or board thought through this issue, do you have a framework for evaluating it? Like what were the inputs and, and how do you think that would guide decisions in the future? Well, the first, the first sort of question we asked ourselves is like, what is the right thing to do here? And you know, that was the guiding principle for all of this. We felt very strongly as a leadership team that it was right. Now that said, because we understood it was a polarizing issue, of course we went to our board with it. Um, I think this is one of those things where you just, the board needs to have the opportunity to provide feedback, give buy-in or not. Uh, and, but we actually didn't, um, we didn't ask them to decide. We said, this is what we're planning to do and this is why. So it was structured as really more of an inform versus a decide. Um, and, you know, thankfully no one, um, no one gave us a really hard time, but, but our board said, this makes sense to us because we understand how it could affect in particular the driver community in Texas. And that, that's a concern for the company. And we understand that if uh, copycat statutes like this are passed across the United States, that will continue to have a larger effect on that community. And so ultimately they said, this makes sense, we understand. Um, and, and you know we talked about it a lot uh, at further board meetings. And again, by and large, um, they were very supportive. And you know it's difficult with issues like this because companies can't take a position on everything. Um, and so to be authentic, you have to decide what are the core positions, but I think you do have to be willing to take things that could be perceived controversially. For me, by the way, uh, this is a constitutionally protected right, and so it shouldn't be polarizing or controversial, um, but of course I recognize that reality. Thanks for sharing that, uh, the way that you worked with your board, because I think that obviously it was a process that worked well for you, but I think it's very instructive for other boards as they think through how to address these areas. Uh, and did you expect when you guys launched this that others would follow or how did you feel about the corporate response from other companies? We didn't know. Uh, we really hoped that others would follow. Um, and I will say we were very excited to see a couple that a couple did. Um, I personally would have liked to see more of a corporate response um, for this issue. And I will continue to push that um, at future opportunities um, because it really is just fundamentally a healthcare access question. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. And thanks so much for taking the time to be with us. I think one of the ways that we found boards and peers and leadership teams like yourself uh, learn is by hearing from others about how they thought through this process. And thank you for describing the way you've worked with your board. I'm certainly impressed with how quickly the company acted on an issue that obviously was core uh, to how the company felt about, about these values and how you wanted to act. And, and I agree with you that I hope it will push others uh, to really consider these issues and what it means for them and, and for their constituents. So thanks so much for taking the time to be with us today. Yeah, thank you so much. And thank you to our audience for joining us.